Hello, everyone, and welcome back into another episode of Flock Talk. My name is John Calavita here with my broadcast partner, Nick Marino, and we're joined by Paul Schoenfeld and Declan Weisner. Guys, how are you doing today? Doing good, man. Guys, doing well. repping, everyone's wearing black today. We're all repping basically <laughs> Rockies colors, guys out there at Colorado Mesa, both Juco bandits. But uh, first things first, um, both of you guys, can you guys give me a scouting report on yourselves? Paul, I'll start with you. Um, yeah, I'm just a uh, left-on-left outfielder. Um, got a little bit of speed, not a lot of power, but can bond a little bit. But, yeah. What about you, Declan? Uh, yeah, I'm a catcher. Pretty much all I play is catcher. Haven't played a other position in a long time. Um, more of a gap-to-gap guy and kind of just try to get on base as much as I can. All right, so again, you guys are both Juco Bandits coming out of junior colleges. You know, Declan, you went to Walter State. Paul, you went to Butler playing for the Grizzlies. Um, what does that word mean to you guys? Declan, you go first. What does Juco Bandits mean? How, like, how would you describe a Juco Bandit? Uh, I would just describe a Juco Bandit as gritty. I mean, all those guys who just want to play ball, they'll go through whatever it takes. I mean, running, lifting, early morning weights, just about whatever we do to play baseball, we'll do so. That's what a Juco Bandit is to me. What about you, Paul? Yeah, I would say grit. I would uh that's kind of the word I would describe Juco Bandit as. It's the it's more of a mental, mental game um than baseball, but at least for me. But yeah. I love that. We've been talking to a lot of Juco guys. They all kind of mention the same things. Grit. It's a grind that you guys go through, but um if you love the game, um, it's worth it. Obviously, I want to ask you guys. Um, you both haven't played in the Northwoods League um, yet. You're coming to Rochester this summer. Uh, what kind of went behind your decision to join Rochester this summer, and what have you kind of heard about the league so far? Uh, we can start with Paul. Um, well, I've played in Kansas both for two years now. My sophomore year high school, or senior year high school, and uh, last year, and I've heard. It's a big change going from Kansas to the Northwoods. So, and a lot more games. I think it's like 30 or 40 more games I'll play. So that's, that's pretty sweet. And a lot more fans. So. Declan, what about I mean, you? I, know, dude, I mean, I, uh, one of my, last year I was with a guy who went to San Francisco, University of San Francisco, and they played Arizona or Arizona State. And I remember that it was the first real time that he had actually been around like, more than a thousand, two thousand plus fans, and he was starting that game, he was pitching that game, and he told me that he he had to, you know, he was, did warm up. He had to actually go back inside the dugout because he puked because he was absolutely like <laughs> flabbergasted because of like just the atmosphere. And I think the Northwoods League, it's going to be a lot for some people, especially guys coming from JUCOs. You know, you're not going to see a lot of fans, especially got we have a bunch of guys from Delta College, not necessarily seeing a lot of fans at those games. And then coming to Rochester and seeing 2,000, 2,500 fans a night, which is going to be really, really cool. Yeah, I can't wait. Should be fun. Yeah, no, I mean, that's pretty much what I've heard is just like uh, Northwoods is pretty much the, the best baseball experience you get in summer ball. So all my buddies that have played in it, they definitely recommended it. And I'm super excited to play in front of some fans and play some good ball. I mean, you guys are coming all the way for the minor league grind. It's 68 games, big time schedule, traveling everywhere. I mean, we're going to take trips to Canada all the way out to North Dakota. It's going to be it's going to be a lot, but it should be a lot of fun. You know, I'm really looking forward to touring the Midwest. Declan, you specifically, you have been to two different JUCO World Series, you know, back to back seasons. Can you talk about that experience a little bit? Uh, Yeah, I mean, it's unlike anything else I've ever experienced, just the fans and the kids and signing autographs. Um, I mean, it definitely took a few games to get used to playing in front of that many people, but once you settle in, it kind of just feels your passion for the game. So I think two of the best years of my life was going to the World Series. Wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. That's awesome. And we talk about winning. Colorado Mesa has got a big tradition, runner-up for the D2 National Championship twice in the last decade. Now that you guys are both in the program, what can you say about kind of the culture in there? And why do you think it's a team that's had so much success in the past? Um, I mean, I, I think it all starts with the head coach. I think coach Hank says he built that program from the bottom up and that dude will give everything for a team 
and the culture the the atmosphere is just i mean it's crazy and that's why and it's a winning program and i mean i've definitely noticed already so I mean, yeah, I'd say the same about. thing. Um, just the coaches kind of set like a really good culture there. I mean, we do everything with intent from the way we do our laundry to the way we put our spikes on. So I think when we're that detail oriented, it's it's hard to not be successful. You guys talk about Coach Hanks. I mean, he just reached his 1,000th win over the weekend. You know, can you talk about what he means to you, you know, how he got you to come to Mesa and what do you think he brings to the table when it comes to this program? Um, Coach Hanks is a guy that's very passionate for what he does. Um, he he's a good role model. He's a good he he sets the tone. He um, at practice it's it's high high intent and um, you know that love that guy. But I mean he's a he's a grinder <laughs> that's for sure, and he loves to win. Does he love to win or does he hate to lose? I think both. <laughs> Probably both. Uh, I'll, I'll direct this one to Declan. Um, your average is right around 500 this year is what we is what we saw looking um, preparing for this interview. What do you kind of think is key in you to such having a great start with the bat so far? Um, yeah, just trying to stay simple and, you know, see the baseball as early as I can. I try not to get too wrapped up in stats and averages and stuff just because I think the minute you kind of admit that you're doing well is once you let your guard down. So I just kind of try to keep the same process every week and see the ball and hit the ball. Stay simple. Is it tough to stay humble like that? I mean, when you're when you're on a hot streak like that, is it, you know, can you get a little cocky? So, you know, I, I've been hitting the ball so well recently. You get a little cocky and just and just kind of get out of focus and lose your stroke a little bit. It can be, but at the same time, baseball is such a hard game that like every hot streak you ever have, you know, eventually it comes to an end and baseball always humbles you. So you just try to enjoy it while you're in it, but never get too big for the moment. Paul, we, you and I have something in common. We were we were both outfielders. I liked I liked right field out there in high school. I loved the angle, but you know, I'm interested in what you have to say about this. What do you think is the hardest thing to do as an outfielder? Because I definitely have my own answer. Man, sometimes I get the yips throwing the ball back in. <laughs> sometimes I get the yips filled in the simple ground ball. I mean, I'm right now I'm having trouble going back. Like it's just a, it's just a constant circle of things you need to work on, things you need to sharpen up. Um, but throwing the ball in, man, that that's hard. <laughs> Like just like on a regular, like yeah, just, like, just trying to get it in. Field, nobody out, just topping it trying in. Trying to I, just, I, yes, I can definitely feel that. I can definitely feel <laughs> that. I thought you were gonna say something like a do or die play, where you know you, your footwork has to be right. You have to make, you have to feel the ball with your in-step foot, and you got to make the perfect throw on the line. I thought that was something that you True. were gonna say because that was always something that I always struggle with. Yeah, that was, that's just instinct. That's just you just gotta work. You just gotta. I mean, that's just all instinct. But throwing the ball back in, it's just like all right. <laughs> don't overthrow them. <laughs> do you have like a specific corner of the app? Do you like left, right, or center? I enjoy center, but I mean, right's always fun too. Airing it out, always the big time play. Yeah. Um, so this is your guys' first year at Mesa, both of you guys coming from JUCO. Um, how has the adjustment been adjusting from a two year school to a four year school? Declan, I'll start with you. Um, I mean, baseball wise with the, there's NCAA restrictions. So it was definitely, I mean, it was easy baseball wise, just because we spend less time at the field and I can, you know, I have enough time to go do whatever I want extra. Um, but I think the hardest adjustment was the school part because JUCO was a little bit easier. You could just kind of coast through your classes, but now that we're taking tougher classes, it's hard to balance class with baseball. What about you, Paul? Yeah, um, kind of the same thing. The other thing is it's kind of hard is there's a lot more rules. Like, I mean, we can't even take pre-workout here. So really? going to lifts, it's like, yeah, it's crazy. There's like ingredients you can't take. And so kind of just adjusting from that, you know, it's 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 a little adjustment you have to make. But in class, class is hard here. <laughs> uh, what's been your hardest class for each of you so far this year? Yeah. 
You can go, Dak. I got to think. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm in a, like a, a business statistics class, which is kind of tough, but I think accounting is probably harder. It's hard and it's just so hard to pay attention because it's pretty boring material. Yeah. But yeah, just staying on the grind and doing your work is tough. Yeah. Mm, I'd have to say, well, what did I take last semester? Some business class. The teacher was a pain in my butt, <laughs> but that was probably the hardest one I've taken so far. Uh, me and John are both broadcast guys, so I stay away from any sort of business accounting. Anything. Yeah. Not, I've been I'm... taking a math class since my freshman year, and we learned, like, slope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, st- I had to take calc last year at oh, Butler. Geez. That was hard. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah, I stay away. I stay away from anything like that um switching gears a little bit on both your guys profiles on the website um one of your reasons for transferring to mesa was wanting to win a national championship um we were talking to declan before this started you guys are off to a good start to the season hot right now how do you think you guys shake up against the rest of the country right now and what do you think you have to do to get that eventual goal of a national championship um you know we had a tough schedule at the start of the season um but now we're kind of we're kind of rolling and i mean winning is winning and i think um you know as a team we kind of all have that same goal it's all it's pretty nice you know all, all going to the ball field and just really preparing for that that end goal which is a national title yeah yeah i just think uh staying on it throughout the whole year is the best thing we can do when you start winning games it's easy to kind of relax a little bit and um, you know, I think we'll probably, we're going to finish the rest of the season pretty good, but we just got to keep our heads right. Cause once we get into that postseason, we play a lot tougher baseball. So we can just keep building the team day by day, never be satisfied. I mean, you got, I mean, Colorado Mason, I was looking it up last night, you know, big winning tradition, obviously, as Nick alluded to, you guys have made, uh, the, the program has made the national championship game twice in the last about 10 years or so. You know, they've, they've come up empty both times, but, I mean, it's, it's it's impressive just to even make it there. I mean, you guys are number one in your region, or number – you're top something in your region. I know you're you're in the top 25 last time I checked for Division II baseball. Does that does that mean anything to you? Does that give you, like, any sort of extra emphasis of pride you know, to go out there knowing that people expect you to do well? Um, I think more of the tradition of Mesa baseball, just being a winning program than being in the top 25. I don't think we really look at the the rankings too much, but there's just a lot of, I mean, everybody on campus knows us as like the best, the best team on campus. So there's just like a lot of pressure to hold up on that. And I mean, we all like it, but it's definitely something we got to fill the shoes of. Yeah. I don't even know what we're ranked. I haven't even been looking at that. (laughs) Um, but yeah, it's a lot of people expect us to win and, um, that's kind of the the pride in it, you know, the the glory, I guess you can say. But yeah, I love that. Um, I'll direct this one to Declan. Um, you said you're a catcher. You've been a catcher almost your entire life. You said so. As a catcher, obviously hitting is one part of it. But behind the plate, calling the game is another massive part of being a catcher as well. What's kind of your approach, pitcher to pitcher, in calling a game and what kind of pride do you take in that role as someone who's involved in every single pitch in the entire game? Um, yeah, I take, I take a lot of pride in all that type of stuff. Um, whether it's pitch calling, receiving, keeping runners on the base that they're at, or just getting the pitcher to trust you. Um, I would hope if you ask the pitchers here that they would, that they would agree that I take pride in that, but, um, it's just, it's a very important role. Sometimes it is a little stressful because it's always you're there and they only really notice you when you mess up, but I love it all. And, so being a part of every play. That's awesome. Is there anybody that you try to model your game after? Obviously, you know, I'm from Philadelphia, so we have the BCIV best catcher in baseball, JT Real Muto. But is there anybody that you like to look at or just model your game after? Uh, growing up, it was always Buster Posey, um, just because I think he's one of the greatest catchers to ever do it. But now there's kind of a shift in the whole style of catching with the one knee down stuff. So I would say probably JT is the guy that I – I learned a lot from just by watching him. Okay. This is kind of, this is a little bit of a leading question, but what do you think of people who use knee savers? 
<laughs> we were talking about this the other day. I don't know why there's such a stigma around knee savers, but you see really? knee savers and you're like, you know what? I don't know about this guy. <laughs> see, okay. I, I, I'll say that because my, my cousin plays softball for Colgate and she thinks that anybody who's a knee sa- who uses knee savers is a little whiner. You know, you're not, you're not as tough. You know, is, is knee savers something that you use? Or you're just, you're just all, you're all natural. I don't use them. Um, I think that's funny. Cause I think Posey actually used them for after he got the <laughs> injury he used them a little bit but yeah there's just there's a weird thing with the knee savers you see a guy wearing those and you're like yeah i don't know if he's gonna be too good so i stay away from him paul i'll throw this one back down to you um you know you're a kansas guy out there from wichita have you noticed any like anything about the um the elevation you know basically what what people like to call the cores effect out there at mesa have you noticed the ball flies a little more out there oh yeah Hundred percent, the ball flies when it's warm here. Also, you know, the first week we got here, um, I was doing some work out in the field at night, and I did like two sprints, and I was gassed. I was like, "This is not good." <laughs> the elevation is definitely can definitely hit you hard. Declan, so you, obviously you've lived in Colorado your whole life. How old were you when you hit your first home run? Oh, I have no idea. Probably <laughs> 10 or 11 years old. Okay. Okay. So normally it didn't, it wasn't, you weren't yeah. like seven, seven years old in absolute tanks. Okay. okay. I got you. I got you. All right. Um, I got one for both of you guys. Um, obviously you guys have went through Juco. You're here playing D2. Um, you love playing the game of baseball, but I'll say, is there one aspect of baseball? Like what is it about baseball that you love most about the game? What keeps you coming in day in and day out and playing this game in college. I'll start with Paul. It's the, the amount of times I've failed in this game and the amount of times I've been, um, I've seen a guy better than me. And that's just kind of what's kind of driven me to be better. Um, the, um, people kind of looking down at me and, um, overlooking me, you know, that's just kind of it's like, yeah, I really want to out, you know, prove these guys wrong. Um, and that's kind of why I'm here now playing for a winning program. Classic case of chip on your shoulder. You got to love that. Cause that, that's just motivation right there. That's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. What about uh, you, Declan? What do you love most? I just love baseball. Just like the, the sounds of the game, the pop of the mitt, crack of the bat um the fans just like the whole environment to me is something super special I mean even right now I'm just holding the baseball playing with it um I just grew up my whole life kind of loving baseball so I don't I don't see myself doing anything else in the next couple years other than playing baseball and no better place to do it than Mesa where you win a lot of baseball games all right I got one last question for Paul and we got one question for both of you well, you're from Wichita. I mean, so obviously you grew up. Did you grow up around Wichita State baseball? Like following? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I was hoping you'd say yes. What do you think of my guy, Alec Bohm? I knew you were going to say him. <laughs> I uh, actually got a story about him. Uh, oh, I don't right. remember how old I was, but um, he was at Wichita State, and I saw him hit a ball over the big jumbotron, and it hit the uh, hit the light pole on the street. And I think it was like almost a 500 foot nuke. And then that's when everybody knew he was going to go pro. So that dude's a stud. Love Alec Boom. You know, he had, a, he struggled a little, a little bit early on in the season. You know, had a couple of expletives to stay yeah. in April. I'm sure you guys remember that, you know, but he, he rectified it. Phillies are, Phillies are coming back. Yeah. No, I don't care. Phillies are, Phillies are coming <laughs> back. I'm, I am, I, I usually do not allow myself to be a sports fan just because of the fact that. Penn State football kills me every year. Phillies kill me. Eagles kill me. Sixers can't get past the second round. And the Flyers are just so irrelevant. But this year, I'm I'm letting myself hope a little bit, even though we're Reese, Reese Hoskins is down. But um, last question for both of you guys. Um, whenever your baseball career ends, whenever that may be, um, what do you see you guys, what do you see yourselves doing, you know, when that when when your baseball career ends? Um I see myself, um, I've, I thought about becoming a firefighter. I've also beca- thought about going to a, the Army or military or something, you know, something to do with that. So don't really know yet, but that's kind of what I'm leaning towards. Um, I see myself 
in baseball somehow, either whether it's, you know, like sports marketing for a baseball team or even coaching. I've started thinking about the last couple of years. I just, uh, I don't see myself ever really leaving the game of baseball. Really, really good answers, guys. But we're past the question section. Now we're going to the fun part. So you guys both told me that you were Rockies fans. So I have five Rockies trivia questions for you. If you get four out of five right, I owe you both a pack of seeds. Oh, man. You guys oh. ready? Yeah. So this, is the, this is the sixth time we've done this, and only one group has gotten it right. Frank and Petey Kraft, you guys are, are going to love them. Uh, they are Pirates fans. They got the Pirates since fairly easily and rockies you know they don't have they're only you know established in 1993 so they got a uh they don't have too much history but they got enough for five um all right question one so the rockies have only made the world series one time who was the nlcs mvp the year they went to the world series in 2007 man this was in 07 i have no idea (laughs) i don't know either uh are we collaborating here on an answer yeah collaborate dudes go for it give, you give guys me a name give me a name declan what were we six years old yeah uh, i'm not even no i was like four <laughs> <laughs> i have no idea Todd Hill. this guy's a stud i mean if you're when you hear his name you'll be a little, you'll be a little frustrated i think gosh dang it he's <laughs> a hitting coach now um can't even think oh he's name. got it he's got it it's it starts with a B. Does it start with a B? No. You're right, though. He is a hitting coach. Didn't he just retire, actually? After he like retired, two like, recently, like, super recently. They retired it's like not Spielborgs, is it? No, it's not Spielborgs. Oh, I didn't think it was him. I don't even know if he was in the 07. Man. <laughs> one more guess. It's going to be a tough one. Declan, got to give me an answer, man. I'm struggling, awesome, man. Uh, hitting coach. I think it was bench coach, actually. Like yeah, something, something like that. Some kind of coach for a college team. Oh, Tulowitzki. Matt Holiday. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> I knew, I knew you guys were going to be mad. I knew you guys. He were is, be yeah. Mad. He coaches o, uh, OSU. Oklahoma State, yeah. He's yeah. Some the uh, former first round, first overall pick. Yeah. He was like Ten years old. Um. All right, question two. So no Colorado Rocky has ever won the Cy Young, but four players in the team's history, history have received votes. Who came the closest to winning? I have no idea, but one pitcher comes to mind, and it's Apollo Jimenez. That is correct. <laughs> yes. Apollo Jimenez. That is correct. One for two. Good stuff. The, the no-hitter? Yeah, no-hitter. Yes. <laughs> That's a good guy. He, he ended up lost. He lost to Doc because Doc Halliday had the best pitching season ever. But, you know, Ubaldo, Ubaldo, you know, I believe he's the guy who gave up the home run to um, Edwin Encarnacion mm-hmm. in the yes. wildcard game a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Question three. This, this might be a little tough. Uh, who is the Rockies' all-time leader in stolen bases? I don't even know who this guy is, John, to be honest <laughs> I mean, I've heard of him. Clint got it, but Clint's also, you know, crazy. With the sports trivia. Man, we're not getting those seeds. <laughs> we're not getting the seeds, man. You gotta move it to three or five, John. Like you're, I might have to move it to three out of five. Three out of five. But I'll be spending uh, all the money. I don't even know any fast guys. Is it recent or is it? Oh, uh, it's a little bit, it's a little bit um it's, it's a little a bit a little far back. It's not like super far, but like far enough. It's pretty far back. <laughs> Eric Young. That is correct. No way. <laughs> oh, my God. They're going to get this, dude. They're going to get this. Is. Oh, there my God. Is. Um. All right. You guys are two for okay. three. All right. Who is the only Colorado Rocky to ever win NL MVP? It's not Matt Holiday. It's not Matt Holiday. Um, Todd Helton won an MVP. No, really. Maybe one more. It guess. wasn't. It wasn't Nato, was it? It was in 1997. Jeez, Larry Walker. That's correct. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah. 
All right. All right. All right. This one's for all the money. There is a three-way tie for the Rockies' all-time lead in all-star selections with five. Can you name the three players who have five all-star selections for the Rockies? I'll give you five guesses to guess the three players. Arenado. That's one. Helton. That's two. Mm. Carlos Gonzalez. No. Oh. That's a good guess, though. He had three. He had three uh, all-star appearances. It's not Chuck Nasty. No. Not, not Charlie Blackman, no. It's going to be one of the Blake Street Bombers, I feel like. Um, I think you got to throw a guess out there. Galarraga? Galarraga is incorrect. Oh, shit. Goodness. So, you guys got the top. You guys got two of them. Unfortunately, won't be getting the seeds. Guys were close, though. Guys were close. So the three guys you said: Arenado, Todd Helton, Troy Tulowitzki. Oh, <laughs> legends! The legends. How the heck did we get that wrong? <laughs> Dang. That's Troy tough. Tulowitzki, one of the best shortstops, and you know he just didn't play long enough. He got hurt. He would have been surefire Hall of Famer if he just if his body didn't put on it. I'll tell you that's that right. why I didn't pick him. I didn't know if he had five healthy seasons to go. To I didn't even know. That's, yeah, that's I didn't even... I'll give you that right there. I'll give you that. And he went to the Blue Jays. Yeah, and the Yanks too. And the Yanks. Barely. All right. Well, I mean, you guys were close though. You guys are up there. I don't. It's. I'm making these tough. I might have to make it three. I might have to make it three out of five at some point. But you guys, you guys were good. You know, you got you got the first one wrong, and then you get three in a row. I don't know how I got the first one wrong either. That's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for coming on. That is going to do it for this episode of Block Talk. For Nick Marino, Paul Schoenfeld, and Declan Wisner, I'm John Calavita. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.